Hi, welcome to Embedded Programming. And my apologies for the video being late, but yep, sorry, but that's how life is sometimes. Um, time is your friend, but then sometimes it's not. But anyway, let's get into it. And so today, um, so we're in section five, and in section five, we're looking at all these different way of controlling a motor using pulsive modulation. And we have one more sort of board to look at. And, um, but I, I wanna illustrate for you um, some of those struggles, like something you set out on a path to do something, you don't have all the answers. And as you walk that path, then you realize like, you know, there's some hiccups. And so I wanna illustrate that for you today. And then I'll, at the end of it, even though um, I'm saying some struggles unfold, I think that there's a way out and hopefully you will be as excited as I am um, in sort of going through this and sort of figuring out a way out, right? Um, that's life, you solve problems. All right, so to reset a bit and make sure we're on the same page, let, let me show you what is it that I intended to do or accomplish in this embedded programming um, series, right? Um, I wanted to start off with um, some simple platform and nothing exotic. So um, you see, it's pretty much just a little square um, platform. And I'll show you a picture of it. I saw you saw it in the last video too, uh, where I mounted the motors. And the idea was I'll have two wheels towards the back, and then I'll connect the two motors to it, motor A and B. Um, for steering, I will simply have a caster. And these are the type of wheels that you would see um, but smaller on like an office chair, for example, they free, they pivot um, at an arm. They have a little thing that pivots and they can spin around. And the thing with that is that we can do steering by just changing um, the relative speed of the two motors and that's gonna allow us to turn. So we don't actually need a steering motor, right? Um, you get steering from the fact that you can stop one wheel or you can slow it down or you can reverse it, that sort of thing. So um, that's going to be steering. And to control the motors, we have a motor controller. Now I said motor controller here, but really that's just saying some way of controlling the motor, whether it was with a motor controller or a motor shield. Now remember the difference between, in my, what, the way I'm talking about is a motor controller is something separate, a shield is paired with a microcontroller board. And so that would be my motor control. And I'll have a microcontroller. And this would be like something like your ESP8266 or an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, whatever. And that would be controlling your motor. Um, you, you'd control the motor th through that, right? But you go through, of course, the motor controller or the motor shield. Okay, now key to this little design that I had was this idea that I did not want this to be tethered. I want it to be a Wi-Fi controlled butt. So I'll have to have some sort of Wi-Fi module. Now I could get a Wi-Fi shield also to go with the microcontrollers, but in this day and age, honestly, I wanted to minimize the number of components or boards that I have, you know, little electronic boards that I have on the bot. And the reason for that is if Wi-Fi is built into the microcontroller, or at least the microcontroller board, um, in, specifically my, the microcontroller board had a Wi-Fi wi board with a module on it, then that simplifies the integration. I don't have too many boards to control. The software integration is easy and all this other stuff, right? Um, and then after that, I can start um, adding like, you know, sensors, and so on, and those would just connect up to my microcontroller. And um, because my board is Wi-Fi control, or I can control it over Wi-Fi, the idea is that my actual controller, I could have a handheld controller, but that could be like a Wi-Fi controller also, um, and that's something to go over the network. Um, or I can use an application. I can write like a, um, a Flutter application to put on my phone, I can control it from a web browser. So I have all these different ways. Once it's Wi-Fi enabled, the, the way I figure it is once I can send control commands to my robot over Wi-Fi, there are a number of ways I can control it, whether it's from a mobile app with a controller that I write in Flutter or a web application I write, or, you know, I use a, um, like a Wi-Fi, um, you know, handheld controller, um, similar to something. They have Bluetooth controllers but something like that, like they have Wi-Fi ones, okay? So something like that. Um, I figured I had options. 
Um, and then I can, of course, like I say, once I have this platform, I can extend it by adding more and more sensors and, and then I can do more intelligent things off of this board. The microcontroller doesn't need to be very powerful because since you're sending it the command and reading, you know, your sensors remotely, you can write really sophisticated application that runs on like a PC, for example. Okay. So key to my design here is this idea that my microcontroller would use formatter. Why I want to use formatter? Well, I did not want to develop in too many languages. Um, I did not want to have to worry about what kind of code the microcontroller supports. If it supports formatter, I can install formatter. And because it's over Wi-Fi, I know that I can run a Go application and I want to use Go for this. I really don't want to spend time developing C and C++, even though I've done embedded C and C++ before. I really want to work in a, a, a language and an environment that is fun and I don't have to worry about too much uh, headache and pitfalls, right? So I've sort of set my mind on just using Go for this thing as the application that's going to run off the board. And so for me, the genius is having Wi-Fi um, on the microcontroller board and or this robot platform somewhere and then using formatter and then on a pc somewhere where you have much more processing power you can run your go application which is your central control and if you want your bot to do something more interesting you simply write a new go application and you can really evolve um, the intelligence of your robot very quickly because if you imagine that on the left side we have this working I never have to go back and touch that. If I want my robot to drive in some weird pattern, I simply go to my application, write that, and I send it over. And if we imagine that all oh, my my board now has some sort of um, some centers, well, okay, I can put like a camera on it and all these other things. I was thinking eventually I would had, but at the end of the day, um, all the intelligence is gonna be on this Go application running on the PC. Now, of course, since this is running on a PC, it's going to talk to my Wi-Fi router, you know, eventually get connected to, because my PC, of course, is in my house and connected to Wi-Fi, either directly or indirectly, but it's connected to Wi-Fi. And so that would also talk to my Wi-Fi router, which would enable me to talk to my board. And again, if I add more devices and so on to my robot, well, I just do the physical connection and then that's it. Like with Formata, because this is running remotely, remember with Formata, it sends the command. The Formata is running as a server listening to a connection that's coming from my Go application. I simply go, oh, by the way, I, re I need to use this new pin or something where I know I've hardwired something. But I really don't have to change anything. The only thing I'm ever doing to my bot is making hardwired connection. And this is still the dream. This is still the dream. Okay. So let's review what happened when we tried to go through the different set of motor controllers and shield and uh, microcontroller combination to see which one would work well. And so the, the, the first one we did was an ESP8266. And the nice thing there is that we had Wi-Fi on the board, the ESP8266 board. We, it can use formatter and we use a L293D microcontroller. And um, that was the, the board that um, I didn't like very much. Um, so in terms of um, what I thought about that combination, it was very easy to get the ESP8266 um, going. Um, that board was, was um, this guy essentially. Um, so, um, but here, you know, this, it can control two motors and it's relatively small form factor really. It's not actually that big. But I really don't like that power transistor there. It's sort of ugly too. Um, so um, I know my robot is not going to win any awards for aesthetics, but I really don't like this board. Um, but it, it, we didn't try it with our new gear motor over there. Um, so uh, we tried it with two other motors, different motors. They were small motors and it seemed to work, but I really didn't like that this is, is a power transistor and all this other stuff. And um, so I'm not too excited about this. The second thing we did was we tried our ESP with a motor controller shield. And I no longer have that anywhere because I literally threw that out. But I'll show a picture of that. And that didn't work well for me. 
um, it, 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 the buttons didn't work, the power buttons. Um, I had like two of those and none of them quite work. Um, the speed was a weird thing. Um, so yeah, so, so, so I didn't, I didn't find that to be the quality manufacturing quality wasn't good. I, I was so uh, unhappy with that combination that I, after making that video, I just literally threw them in the garbage. And so I don't have any more of those. Um, the third thing we tried was the ESP8266 um, and the MD, um, the Citron MD513S. And this is a Citron board. And um, we saw that though, the Citron board, um, the problem we had there was with the ESP8266. I found out later, thanks to a viewer who pointed out that the reason why we couldn't get good control, um, speed control, is because the ESP8266 has 10 bit, um, you know, uh, pulse rate modulation. Um, so basically, you have to set from 0 to um, 1K, um, essentially, and 1024 value to get the full um, duty cycle. And so with the formatter code and go, you can only do zero, it's a byte value, so 255. So we only get a quarter of the speed. So our motor was never running full speed. And I think it's because the, the processing power of this too, it couldn't really keep up with the signaling. Like we saw a number of errors. If you remember this um, Citron board have an error LED somewhere. And yeah, we, we saw that was being lit. We saw both of these lights being lit. It was sort of weird. It looked like if almost the board wasn't functioning properly. And so um, trying to drive those Citron board with the ESP8266, um, it didn't look like, uh, it didn't look that promising. Um, the only thing I have to say though is we weren't using these motors here, identical motors we were using those silly at a smaller motor. So maybe that might have something to do with it, the current draw and what's not. So maybe I can retest that. Um, just for completeness sake, I'll retest that. And if I see anything interesting, like it really seems to work, I'll let you guys know. Otherwise to that, um, I'll consider the ESP8266 and the Citron to be a no-go only because the hardware wise, this can only do um, up to 255 and that's not gonna be enough signaling. What I'll do when I retest it, I'll try to do software signaling. Basically, is I'll simulate the, you know, the pulse width modulation. The problem there is because I'm simulating the pulse width modulation, um, I believe that oh, if I try to do too much work on this board, um, the signaling quality is not gonna be great. And we saw that one time when I was doing something else, I tried to do software signaling. And when I put it on my um, logical um, analyzer, um, we can see it how the signal quality was all over the place. So that's why I don't really think that our ESP8266 and the Citron board are going to go really well. And yeah, so that's it. Uh, the fourth thing we did was we used um, an Arduino Uno, this guy, and um, we use this Groove Shield with this Arduino Uno. And I'm not going to try and connect it. And then we were able to just connect our MD5S directly, and we saw that out because the Arduino pulse width modulator uh, modulation is also 8-bit, um, and that worked really, really well. It's So it's completely supported by Formata. I, I was so impressed and blown away with the, the, the speed control that we had, how smooth it was. The um, MD513S board didn't add the error LED lights up or any weird things with both lights lighting up or anything like that, which which what we saw with this guy. I don't know if you guys remember that, where I was really confused as to how A and B were both lit at the same time. But anyway, that was working super great. So um, I'm super happy with that combination of the Arduino and the MD, um, MD13S. Um, so the only drawback though, is that if you look at my intent of being able to have a robot platform, like if you imagine that I right now just stick this shield, pair it with my Arduino board here, and I, you know, put this together over here, I, I sort of have a robot platform. It's just that I can't come up, control it remotely, right? Because these guys are gonna go into the shield, blah, blah, blah. I, let's ignore battery power for a second. Um, the thing is, I cannot control it remotely. And it'd be fine to upload code and have it do something interesting. 
um, or put a wired connector maybe that can read inputs from, you know, um, there, but I don't want to do that. And my goal is to have, and there's my caster, uh, my goal is to have a remote control board um, bot, and that is what I want, um, at least Wi-Fi control bot. So enter this Arduino Uno. So this is an Arduino Uno. This is an Arduino Uno. This is the first, one of the first versions. Um, these two boards are essentially identical. If you spend enough time looking at them, I don't see how well you can see them under the light, uh, but I'll move this up a little bit closer. This is an Arduino Uno. This is an Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi revision two. No, I don't know what a revision one board looks like, but I got a revision two, I got a couple of months ago. Um, this board is about 40 bucks. Um, I also picked up at the same time a motor control shield and it's using the same L293, I think, or L298 um, D that we have seen on many other controller board. But anyway, um, this is a shield because it can mate with this Arduino or this Arduino Uno. All right, so I picked up these two at the same time. This is about 20 bucks, I believe. This is about 40 bucks. All right, so I was really excited to pick this up because remember, I really like this board because it has Wi-Fi module already come with a microcontroller. I don't, and it supports Formatter. I was hoping that since I can put Formatter on this guy, which we have seen, I'll be able to get Formatter on here and I can get Formatter on here Unfortunately, the formatter doesn't support the Wi-Fi module. So why formatter on here supports Wi-Fi, formatter here does not support Wi-Fi. Um, I would love to be able to get that. I'll create an issue to see. Oh, I think somebody already created an issue actually for this. And I think I added, I um, put, added a comment. But I want to get Wi-Fi supported on this because this would be awesome. Because then if Wi-Fi can be supported, I put my formatter on there. I can talk to it remotely. I can mate it with this motor control board. And now, at least for this bot, I can remove the Cytron board. I love the Cytron board, but remember I wanna reduce the number of boards I have on my little small platform here. And I can control that directly. And the nice thing with the Arduino, it has a number of other um, digital inputs and analog um, GPIOs than this guy does. So um, just look at the number of connections there, right? I can still put this on and make it easy to connect a whole bunch of other sensors and stuff that support, that's supported by Groove, with the Groove Shield and the Groove Connectors. So that was the goal, that's the wish. The problem is, like I say, um, Formatter runs here like it runs on this guy, just very straight over serial, not over Wi-Fi. So that leaves me in sort of, of a dilemma. And so this is where the struggle comes in. So let me go through now um, what I see as the hopes and the possibilities going forward, given all that I went over and what we've done. So I can use this Arduino Uno Wi-Fi Revision 2 board. I can use Go on it, so I'll have to use C++, which is, like I said, the sort of the thing that you use with Arduino. It's a simplified C++, so it's not the end of the world, um, but I really prefer not to use it, um, but I, yeah, I can use that. I can use the Arduino shield that comes with it. And now um, I'm done, except for the fact that to control it, because I have Wi-Fi, I would use a Go application. At this point, I'm not using Formatter. My Arduino shield, I would run, they have an example also of this. I can run a web server on there and I can talk to the web server, you know, over REST using my Go application, which will be super easy to write in Go. And I can, and the uh, Wi-Fi module that comes with Arduino for this board is not hard to use either. You can do a, um, a server or a client very easily. And I can just put some handlers for different things. So I can say, you know, I have a handler for controlling motor A and handle control motor B. And as I add more devices to the board, or sensors and so on, I could have had more handlers. So that's one approach. Thing is, I really don't want to be writing C++ code. I don't care that it's even simpler on Arduino. So I don't want to do that. So I'll put a little gray bar over that. I don't hate it, but I don't like it very much. Another approach is to still use this Arduino Wi-Fi board and use the growth shield. So now I'm doing uh, this sort of business. 
and then you know I use these guys together right because these guys plug in directly here and it's the same thing I'd be using a Citron board but um, and then the same restful application um, why do that well if I really like the Citron board but at that point if I'm going through all this I think it's going to be too complex and just like software if you have more things than you sort of need if you can get away with less to go that route so I'm going to put a red line through that option because I really don't like that that would be the absolute last thing I would do um, another possibility is to reintroduce my ESP8266 and have that go to an Arduino Uno. Not this necessarily this Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi. That would be a waste because we're not using that anymore because we already get Wi-Fi from the ESP8266. So something like that. And then we pair these two guys like that. And then if I'm using a shield like this guy, for example, then I can have connection between these two boards very very easily and at that point well if I bring this into the picture now you see I have three boards here and two here that's five boards seems like an overkill but what I can do is just put this motor control board on there take away these two MD5 boards so I have four boards now on my platform but it does allow me to do Wi-Fi go to our Arduino Uno which is all the way on it there and then go to this guy, this, this um, motor control shield um, here. And that would be good. And then now I can talk to my ESP8266 um, from my Go application. So I sort of back, back to where I would like to be. Um, before you can imagine that I had the ESP8266 going to some kind of motor controller or shield. Um, no, in between there, I had to stick at Arduino Uno only because of the pulse width modulation difference between the ESP, what do you can do with the ESP82, the 10 bit um, ES, um, pulse width modulator on the ESP8266 versus the 8 bit that format of support. Now, the nice thing about this, well, a nice thing, uh, one set of possibility between this connection between the ESP8266 and the Arduino is that I can use digital and analog pins. What I mean by that is, let's say, um, to control my Arduino model shield, I know that I need actually six pins. So I need like, you know, pins that just digital pin that I would just say on or off. And then I need like a pulse width modulation pin. And so I can just relay those, do a one to one connection between the ESP8266 and the Arduino. I have enough pin on the ESP8266 to do six pin directly to the Arduino. And in the Arduino, I'd write some either simple C or from other code. That's in question, but it would be a simple thing. It would be like, oh, read this pin. And if it says it's on, then turn on the shield. Like I can read in some one pin and then write to another pin. For the Arduino, it means I would be using like 12 pin because six would come there from the input side of the ESP8266 and six would be going out to the other side to the Arduino shield. This doesn't scale very well because if I add any kind of sensor I would need for every sensor, I'll need double amount of pin. Let's say I added a, um, a sensor that only uses one pin. On the Arduino side, that would be an input pin from that sensor or output pin. And then on the other side of it connecting to the ESP8266, I would need another pin for the ESP8266 and the Arduino to talk about that pin that's to relay that information either going out or coming in, right? And so, Analog to digital is probably the easiest way to sort of connect this guy, but it doesn't scale in terms of connectivity of um, devices and so on. And so I can use something like I square C and that allow me to just use two pin between the ESP8266 and the Arduino. And with that, um, I can just communicate my intent. So my Go application would send to the format application running on ESP266 and I can literally send through straight to the Arduino, like, oh, just send this out over um, I squared C, this is what I want because the Arduino will just look like an I squared C device connected to the ESP266 and I can literally write from my Go application straight through um, to that Arduino, like what I want. So the communication is really between the Go application and the Arduino. So that would work, except that I have to keep updating the C code. And again, I don't want to write really C code, but I think the C code is not going to be as bad. Um, the I-square 2 library on Arduino, it's fairly easy to use. It's just me having this resistance to really wanting to write C code and 
even where work with multiple languages in this product. But that is still an option. The other option is to use MQTT on the Arduino. MQTT is a messaging um, protocol and their um, brokers and stuff. And so if there is a MQTT module that I can use for Arduino, then I can possibly put that there and send MQTT messages from my Go application to it. I'll have a broker running somewhere and the uh, ESP8266 would subscribe to it or something. So that's also an option. I'll have to explore that a little bit. And that's what section six is going to be about. I'll talk a little bit more about section six. But anyway, that once I can sort of get this communication between Go and my Arduino going, um, whether it's through digital pin or I squared C or MTTT, then of course we can use the Arduino shield. And so that puts us back to, you know, where we have this sort of connection where I have Arduino Uno and this motor shield. I have this guy and this guy's going to connect to this. But of course, to connect that as easily instead of doing wires, well, it's going to be wires, but you know, making the connection super easy. I'll use the sh this growth shield, but still not too bad. I'd rather stack things up than having too many boards, you know, on the um, bot. And then for this bot, you would not have this MDS thing anymore. All you would sort of have is these two guys on the other side. You know, I'll turn this over. Um, let's do that right now. So if I turn this over and we ignore that though, these MDS is over there, then, you know, we can have something like this. And so uh, we just need a place for our battery and we could mount the battery in front or in the back, you know, we can figure that out. And that's it, all right? And so um, that's gonna be the butt. And it, I think it doesn't look as bad with these two set of boards. Yes, stacked, yes, but stacking makes it a much cleaner design than if, for example, I actually try to do something where I actually integrate. I don't use the motor control board for this motor control shield, and now I have to bring those two into the picture. So I think this is a way to go. Um, just for completeness, um, this, like I said, if I really wanted to use the ESP8266, um, I could do the software pulsing modulation and then go to the growth shield for, you know, like this guy, use the growth shield and then use the Citron board. So that would be this solution. The only concern I have, and of course we have the Go application. The only concern I have is this board's ability to do the, some clean signals to give us our duty cycle, even if I could make this work perfectly with this. Let's just say I could make this, these two things work perfectly. I still think we have a upper limit with the fact that in terms of the number of peripherals that we can potentially have add to this board, it's sort of limited. Yeah, it looks like if we have a number of pins, but I explained how these groove shield already work, is a number of these pins are actually shared. For that reason, I'm putting a gray line through this one also. Um, I don't hate it as much as the first one, um, but I, th I think the third option is the way we're going to go. So in the next video, this is, I call this part 5-1 to sort of lay out the obstacles that I sort of encounter, summarize where we are and reset what is it that I'm trying to do. So it, we owe it to ourselves since we have this now to test this and see how it works as a motor controller. So see you in part two, five two, when we'll run it over serial and try to make sure we can control our board. Then in section six, I said we'll talk about section six. Section six is when we're gonna go through and see how we build out this whole thing here. And section six is gonna be figuring out what are we, we probably going to start off with doing digital and analog to get things connected and get that working because that's the simplest. Then we should move on to doing like I squared C and or investigate whether MQTT is an option. If you have any comments or suggestion, um, sure, I'm willing to hear them um, always. So feedback, welcome. Take care. See you. Bye.